Welcome back. Let's do some more game reviews tonight. Um, I'm reminded that about 20 years ago, I published an article. It's been lost to the sands of time, but the gist of it was uh, you have the time on your chess clock, spend it, find the best move, and it will pay off. You won't spend the rest of the game flailing about. If you take a minute, calm down, find a plan, and execute on it. It can be hard to do with the timer ticking, especially if you've watched any chess commentary over the decades or listened to chess radio or whatever. There's this absolute insistence by like 90% plus of that community that look at the clock, look at the clock, look at the clock. No, <laughs> look at the freaking board, <laughs> relax, find a plan. And if you struggle with that during the game, you're not playing the right time control. And, um, I mean, it could be one thing to say, okay, we want to practice this time control, and that's fine. And maybe sometimes you will struggle to find a plan during the game. So the other point is, well, okay, after the game, you still have time. Find a plan. Think through, like, okay, if I were in that situation again and I had all the time in the world, what would I do here and why? It takes some level of reflection uh, to come up with some deeper ideas and insights beyond what's just popular. Um, maybe I should start like a chess coaching business or something. I don't know. Anyway, let's look at some shogi games. It'd be fun. Um, yeah, these were fun to watch. I caught most of them. These are all pretty good. Yeah, this is a typical way you would open with a uh, central file rook typical castle i played this gold move all the time it's fine i got told i shouldn't play it but it's it doesn't matter it's fine it, often it's quite helpful to have that there but um it's time and stuff that could be spent building your own castle and you could delay this till you need it or it's hard to figure out exactly when you need it so playing it in advance is fine um, this is pretty aggressive, but it's actually called for. If you look at this, the opponent's bishop is not defended by a general. So consequently, we've opened a line for our bishop. This is excellent that we have an open line for our piece. So let's make the best of it. Um, and so, yeah, this is reasonable. A calmer approach, you could still complete your castle and then do this whenever, but uh, since the bishop's not defended, this is a fine time to do such an attack. The opponent is building toward attacking on the center file. Yeah, it's good that we're, com oh, we're completing our castle. We drop a pawn to block the opponent's rook. That's understandable. I'm getting a little nervous that we haven't completed our own castle, but and then we're exchanging pieces while this silver fork is present. Getting a little more nervous. Um, but never fear, we attack first. The opponent runs away. <laughs> I missed this game. <laughs> oh. Yeah, this is a please don't hit me kind of moment. Um, what are they doing playing this opening? If that's the way they're going to play it. Um, I don't know. So we keep aiming for the king. Excellent. You know, forget the fork, it doesn't even matter if we give up material. As long as we get the king, nothing else matters. Uh, yeah, this is why you want to complete the castle, so you can play this to defend that. But, uh, things are going to get complicated. That's okay. Um, we don't defend the head of our castle, but we keep attacking. The opponent misses the fork, and coerces our rook to a safer square and a safer square still. And then they drop a silver in front of their pawn, guaranteeing that the pawn cannot be used in the attack. This is a bit far from our own king. Uh, they could have dropped it up here. I don't know why they didn't. Um, I don't know. It's an interesting game. I mean, again, we could probably even sack the rook. None of this matters. We have a castle and they don't, so... I have no idea what's going on, but... 
Oh, I'm sorry. No, this just drops the bishop if they do that. I <laughs> Okay, I have a board vision issue here. But, um, yeah, they led the attack with the bishop, but they didn't have anywhere to go when we hit the bishop. That's what's going on here. I spaced out on that. So the opponent grabbed a pawn, but then their attack slowed down. Oh, we do exchange here. Very cool. Uh, the Tokian is faster than you think. Actually, this is excellent, too. This piling on, since the castle uh, for the opponent is completely in shambles, I like this move. Whatever engine commented on this game afterward didn't care for the move, but I like it. If you're playing against a human, you're probably going to win if you play this move. So, uh, what's to complain about? Um, taking the rook. <laughs> it is a rook. I do like rooks. Um, an alternative might be just promote this. I don't know what they're doing here. But then we're threatening to play bishop here and mate. Uh, or if it's not mate, it might as well be. But yeah, this looks kind of cool. I have, I don't get this position. Both players are attacking pretty severely, which is completely in the spirit of the opening. Um, yeah, this is an exciting game. Pieces get exchanged. Rook drop happens. It's fine. Um, I see. I missed this. Uh, yes, I guess in retrospect, it's safer to drop the rook further away. Uh because of this gold move. I hadn't thought much about this because I don't think this castle's very good, but um so after the game here, like you can bring the bishop in, you can bring the promoted pawn in. There's probably a lot of ways to pursue this. But also possible would just be I have a dragon chasing the king on this completely exposed flank. Um so, like, I guess the opponent drops a pawn to deal with that. But then there's a common tactic here. Maybe our king is in a lot of danger. I don't think so. I, yeah, I don't know what's going on in this position. But how did this proceed? Oh, okay, we attempted to mate, although this is a rook, not a dragon, so... <laughs> but the opponent might have thought it's a dragon. That does whatever works works. Uh, okay, the opponent takes our dragon. Let's check this. Yeah, I commented on after the game, and um, oh hi there, knows. Uh, yeah, that that generally never works. There are some specific instances where it does, but yeah, if you're looking at this, if this is the only move you're looking at, you need to look for another move. Uh, and thankfully this does exist. You could call that board vision, but like, if I'm looking at this, if I spend any time on it, I'm like, no, I need to list other candidate moves. Even if the other candidates don't win, I need to find, like, what's my plan B? Because I, I just hesitate playing the move that lets the king run away. Um... I do it sometimes anyway, but I hesitate at least. Anyway, so yeah, the silver drop didn't lead to mate and bad stuff happened. And we don't care about the rest because the time had come, the time had gone, and there was nothing left to be done at that point. This is uh, the fatal move. You could argue there's maybe other possibilities. I think overall this was a good game. It didn't turn out the way they wanted, but not every game does. They found a lot of good ideas, but some finesses, like do you, how close do you drop the rook? I guess experience is a teacher here, and so experience would say this is something an opponent could do, but an experience would also say if the opponent does in fact do that, yes, we can go attack this way, uh, but it's fine to pursue Oops. Why didn't I get prompted there? It's fine to promote the rook um, and pursue other avenues in 
Um, yeah. So, like, this is another idea. So, uh, I've been on both sides of that kind of position. And, yeah, I don't really think they have a pretty serious force here. Even though they have three pieces attacking, we've got uh, three defending against these three attackers. So I think it's going to be fine. As long as our king doesn't get flushed out into the middle with a gold drop there. I just don't see how that happens. If they try to flush us out to the left, our king could race up over here. If they try to flush us out to the right, they don't have the pieces just yet to do that. And we have a gold we can defend with, so it's... We're doing fine, but we do need to be careful and thoughtful here. Um, but how did we even get here? Like, yeah, Central File Rook stuff is pretty crazy in general. Um, the Silver Advance was fine. I might have, like, been a coward and pushed this over here, um, which is a pretty atypical castle shape, but... Uh, Maybe in this one specific circumstance, even though it exposes the gold, it might buy us some time to pull off whatever fierce attacks we've got going with their rook hanging. We're still threatening to promote and take here and then promote over here and like do this absolutely. Oh, we have gold drop mate after all that. So like we have some very extreme threats that they have to do something about. How did they respond? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Welcome. Yes, yeah, so the other lesson here, I guess, is like the rook. I like my rooks. But, um, yeah, this might have been the key idea here. Uh, I don't see how the opponent escapes this alive. So everything's hanging, but uh, we're <laughs> this is just brutal. Um, yeah, you don't expect to see this in a speed game. It did show up somehow. Really sharp tactics. How did we even get here? I don't know. Oh! This is how we got here. We saved our pawn. Which is reasonable. Um, but we didn't have to get into this confrontation here. We could just run away. And we're still threatening to promote. This is the actual key. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, yeah, this is the key insight of the game. No engine's ever going to tell you this, but... Just thought-wise, the opponent has trapped their rook. The bishop is blocked. The bishop cannot promote over this way. And they have a one pawn and two silvers. If they had a knight, if they had a wide variety of pieces to attack with, we'd be terrified. But they don't have a variety of pieces. They just have one kind of piece. And our bishop line is open, which is excellent. And our rook line is mostly open, which is also excellent. So, yeah, this position is absolutely magnificent. And we could take a minute and take a deep breath and find... Yeah, attacking the bishop felt exciting and the right thing in the moment, but dropping back just wins, so good enough. Uh, so that's game one. I don't intend to spend a whole bunch of time on each game, but just try to give some insights of things to look for. So the opponent blocks their bishop in, yet we activate our bishop. That's fine, that's fine. Uh, was this the game I was asking that question about? We'll find out. So, yeah, this is fine, this is fine. Our rook is on... A, so, yeah, our bishop is roaming the board, which is excellent. Our rook is getting more and more active by the turn, which is wonderful. Um, so, uh, one more high-level concept that's asked is, like, okay, where? what file is your king going to go on? Is it going to be this file, this file? Where are you going to put the king? Where's the opponent going to put their king? Is it going to be here? Is it going to be there? Where's the king going to be? Um, and then based on that, um, where do we want to attack? Like, Or, I'm sorry, based on that, what's the shape of the castle? And what's the shape of the attack? High-level concept strategy stuff, right? 
But anyway, let's start with this. Um, yes, yeah, so we complete our castle. We've picked this castle. Was this the right castle to pick? Probably not. Um, so backing up. The opponent has, uh, before they've seen where we've committed our king, the opponent has committed to a third file attack. This pawn is back here. They've finished their castle in a way that they cannot continue building it. Why can't they continue building it? Because, um, like, there's this weakness over here. Um, we'll get back to that in a second. This is high, higher level, like, pawn structure stuff. But the opponent is kind of committed to this. Yeah, they could find a way to manage an edge file attack, I guess. Um, I guess my own personal preference against this sort of thing, if we have time for it, and I don't know if we do. Uh, so, like, they played Ishida, so this is definitely a third file attack. Well, yeah, actually, I don't know what I'm talking about. They can, they can push this. Uh, I've gotten slammed by this before, actually. Yeah, if we had time for it, I would have preferred uh, High Mino. But actually, uh, this castle's a low castle. There's no generals on the third rank. But here it kind of works out somehow in a way that it usually doesn't. But my preference would have been, um, even though they can do that, I still would have preferred to like uh, complete the castle this way. But that's just my preference, and I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm not an opening expert. I think, like... This file is a key point. And this idea of them bringing the bishop out this way is going to intersect through this point. So that's why I want to fight very hard to get this point and not allow the bishop in. Um, so that's kind of my impression. And to me, it seems like the easiest way to do that, would, and flexibly do it, would be through this move order. Because the opponent hasn't contested this square yet. Um, and if they try to push this pawn to contest the square, that just opens the diagonal for our bishop. Which could be massively problematic for them. But, again, I don't know. Consult someone. Consult an engine who knows this stuff. I don't know. It's just an idea. Uh, the opponent does attack down the diagonal. They do use the silver. Again, if we were able to push this pawn safely... Um, we could contest this diagonal, but uh, instead we push the knight. That's a typical idea. I don't like the... Well, I'm sorry. There's two bind sets here. One is that the knight is not that useful against this point. Um, knight might be useful on the third file, but I don't think so. And you remember how I said we're going to cycle back and identify what's the weakness of the castle, right? So if I just draw some arrows, like this is... Oh, do we have other colors? Um, how do I get other colors with this stuff? I don't know. We'll do green. It's fine. Green doesn't show up either. All right, we'll, um, we'll just do this step by step then, I guess. So, this point is defended by these two generals. Um, yeah. Somehow I wasn't able to get other colors. That's weird. So this is defended twice. This is defended twice by these two generals. Actually, also the king defends, but we don't count the king. The king's vulnerable. We'd rather not count the king if we don't have to, but sure, two and a half are defending that. This is defended um, by the two generals and the king. This is defended um, by everything here. So uh, I guess the point I'm trying to get at is these four points are very heavily defended, right? Um, so what's the weakness? Well, it'd be the other point, wouldn't it? Now, there is an argument that um, 
there's also weakness back here. And there is. Like, if we get a rook back here, or somehow we vacate this row, uh, like, weaknesses can appear elsewhere. Um, but yeah, the weak point is the remaining point. And uh, I argued that changing the shape of this castle into another castle, I just don't know a way to do that. I think this is the final shape for this castle. I don't think there's a way for it to transition easily to other shapes without making tons of other weaknesses in such transformation. And we've built the same castle. We have the same weakness, right? So, like, we've defended um, each of these points really heavily. Um, but, uh, yeah, this remaining point is a bit of a soft spot. So... Um, whereas if we picked High Mino Castle, uh, there, the soft spot would be an attack from the side. High Mino Castle is, has generals defending the top of the castle. It's harder to break down than this is from the top. But this is, this can be broken from the top, but all, mostly on this file. Or, I guess, if they promote the bishop on this diagonal, that's possible too. But anyway, it helps to know this is the weakness. Um, so, yeah, this rook is aiming directly at the weakness, which is excellent. And if other pieces were to join that, that's superb. Um, now, as for bringing up the knight, yeah, it can be useful to defend the bishop's head. That makes sense. And long term, the knight might also support this kind of attack. Even though this is not the weakness of the castle, there might still be some instance where the opponent, I don't know how, but they make this weak and we choose to um, attack it. It's unlikely, so it's more likely that the knight is just going to defend the bishop's head and not do anything else, but... Or maybe it sacks itself on uh, the 3-7 square. I don't know. So yeah, the knight moving up is good because it defends the bishop's head. Although, yeah, and then we push the edge, but the weakness is this point. This pawn's just not going to hit it no matter how many times we push this pawn. But we don't have anything better to do because like, our castle is inflexible here. We've picked a shape that we can't change. It's just a challenging position for both players. The opponent shuffles some pieces, and then the opponent throws away a knight to try to get an initiative. And we just play this level-headed defense, you know? It's fine. Easy. Just keep taking all the free stuff. Um, now, this is a critical point in the position. This would have been a cool move. Um, scary, obviously. But, if you read it out, and maybe I'm missing something here, um, this just is massively good. If the opponent retreats, uh, we don't have a pawn to block with. <sighs> Man, it'd be cool to have another pawn here. Um, what else can we do if we don't have a pawn? I still like this. I'm not going to drop a knight there, because I don't want to give the knight back. But, um, like, we've taken space. We've covered the head of our castle and the center from a lot of scary stuff. And taken away the best square from this bishop. But maybe the silver... I mean, the silver drop defends the knight. It does that well. I See, like... How did we get into this position? Well, we spent two moves pushing our edge pawn instead of doing something else, because it's not clear what to do here. It really is not clear what to do. And I commented how, like, you want to, after the game, take time and find a plan. And now I'm being a big hypocrite, because I don't want to do the hard work of figuring out, like, what the hell's going on here. Uh, I commented earlier I would have built High Mino, and 
I don't know if that would have made things any easier. Maybe if we'd built Hymena, we could have broken this diagonal open. Or done something else. Like, maybe in that case, pushing the pawn aggressively is fine, because our castle's not under attack. The opponent's attack, uh, at first, I just kind of, like, thought that this was just a crazy idea. Um... And during the game, I wanted to see this, but maybe there's some complications here. I don't know. Like, this seems to protect everything. Yeah, maybe this is the key point. So maybe it wasn't building high Mino to try to do something else. But maybe this was just the key moment. Um, the opponent can't really do anything to continue attacking without giving away pieces. Um, what if they do give away pieces to continue attacking? What do we do? Do we want to give them a silver or a knight? Um, we really don't want to move the knight. Uh, we really don't want to move the knight, but... Uh, no, it's... this is fine. No, but they have a pawn in hand. Hi, ay ay Why do we have to figure this out? I guess giving him a knight's fine. So they take... we take... and if they drop another pawn, they're just out a piece. Uh, if they bring up the silver, we could exchange and... It's rare to have these chances where the opponent's attack is so fragile that you could just break it from the head of the attack, but I don't see any problem with just taking all the free stuff here and defending this point. Um, but still, like, this should have been fine too, no? Oh. Uh, yeah, we picked violence here, didn't we? What if we picked peace? What if violence didn't interest us? And, you know, they attack our bishop, and we say, okay, you can have the bishop, whatever. Um, like, is this, what does this look like? This isn't good enough, is it? This isn't good enough. Dang. I wanted this to work. This would be cool, but, um, yeah, this just isn't good enough here. So, yeah, allowing this, um, I guess getting the rook and breaking up their attack was awesome. Oh, wait, we gave away a bishop and a gold for a rook. Okay, that's why this is so painful. Because we gave away a piece, um, and then we gave away a knight. So we got a rook for three pieces, and lost the initiative in the process. Uh, but we did save time on the clock. But yeah, the, the rest of the game got really complicated. Um, but maybe I'm just biased, I don't know. I think it's worth taking a minute, finding... Well, okay. Like, it's complicated, because back here, I'm like, well, okay, I can't even find a plan. Uh, we've built a castle that I'm not super familiar with. I don't see a way to harden the castle any further. And the opponent has already taken this point, so we can't take it anymore. Um, so this is just a super hard position to find a plan in. So, like, if I'm contending that you have to anticipate this back in time, and, okay, say even you built this castle, but, like, having anticipated the silver advance, like, what do you do? It's not easy. Um, yeah, you basically don't want to push anything. Which I think means this is the only safe thing to push here. I really don't want to push the weak pawn. That would be insane. Um, this knight jump followed by these two pawn pushes. Just like... It does defend the bishop's head. But... Uh, 
If we do this, if they hit here, do we care? You're giving away a pawn. Oh, but our bishop's unsafe. Uh, yeah, we actually do care. So we can't allow this here. So, <laughs> wow. So this is maybe the first mistake here. That hurts. <sighs> How am I supposed to explain that this is a mistake? Like, that can't be a mistake, can it? Um... Like, I liked all of these moves leading up to this. Yeah, maybe I would have moved the bishop instead of the rook. I... No, no, the rook's exposed. We have to do it this way. Um, we know... Okay, the opponent spent one turn pushing this knight up. Maybe this is a big clue that, like, how the opponent intends to proceed attacking has a lot to do with quick Ishida. Um, and building Kimiso against it just, yeah, I didn't realize, like, my instinct of just building some kind of Mino to get my king off this file, um, I didn't think that that made a big difference, but the more I look at it, uh, the more I realize that maybe it does matter. Maybe it matters a lot. That's... I'm really surprised. Uh, it doesn't make sense. Especially because, like, there's a saying that if you play the Mino Castle, don't push the center of Um... Or at least if, if you're playing it through a move order where you have the option to or to not push it, then in those move orders you just leave it back here. But here we get other advantages for having pushed it. Um, I guess... <laughs> yeah. I don't know what to suggest. Like, you played pretty much every move I would have played here. Um... Like, sometimes I've done stupid shit like this, but I can't recommend it. Yeah, this is just... I'm so bewildered by it all. Um, maybe this is necessary? I am so confused. We managed to get ourselves into this mismatch where... The opponent has their rook directly targeting our king. And uh, I meant red. But and our rook kind of misses. Like it hits the weak point. But um, uh, it's not enough. And the other pieces can't hit the square either. And the silver like can't move to the left because the bishop's in the way. So... This is just some combination of strategies that result in really complicated tactics, I guess. So we gave away three pieces to get a rook and then got screwed, because like there's no saving this once you're down three pieces. Oh, but we won this game, didn't we? <laughs> we won this. Or am I thinking of a different game? Uh, no. I'm thinking of the next... Oh, this one. Yeah. Technically a win. Because the opponent um, missed checkmate in one. Uh, but it's okay. A win's a win. <laughs> we fought back. We found complications. <laughs> yeah, my reaction to this is like, there's no coming back from this, right? But no. We fought to the very end and actually won it. So congrats. Well played. That's the way you should do it. Um, a win's a win. All right, game three. Let's take a look. Accidental fourth foul rook. That's fine. It's good fun. There, we built Mino Castle. Hi, Mino. 
There's no need to move the knight. Um, moving the knight is useful if you're trying to target this square. Or maybe sometimes if they built Anaguma and you try and target this square, but I don't think so. If they built Anaguma, you're not going to checkmate them in the opening. The knight's useful to hit this square. Or if they've really effed up, fork these two squares. But here, why move the knight? Like, unless you're playing Silver Crown. Um, and here, I mean, maybe you're allowing this on purpose. I don't know. So you're playing Silver Crown. I don't know. Like, yeah, both kings are on that side of the board. It's, it's fine. I don't play Silver Crown, so I don't know anything about it. Um, though this was hilarious. So the opponent had also brought their knight out. Um, I don't know if they were inspired by what we did. but So we win a knight. And then we win a silver for a knight. And this is a little unfortunate. Didn't, like, go for the jugular. Uh, it's good enough. It's good enough. But you could... Oh, man. There's some possibilities here. <laughs> I was thinking, and oh hi there was also thinking, like, what if we hit the bishop? That looks kind of fun, right? Oh no, but they might bring the bishop back. Oh, but what if we hit the bishop again? Well, okay, we've bullied the bishop twice. It might go back here. Okay, but then what about this? Hmm. Yeah. The spectator sees all the moves. It's one of those proverbs out there. Um, we were this close to finding it. Maybe next time we'll find it. But, like, a, you don't start an attack with a bishop. Like, that's kind of a big red flag that if the only piece attacking is your heaviest piece, um, your attack's not going to work. Unless some magic happens. But, yeah, so... Yeah, this actually, you yeah, know, if they go back here directly, same idea. So unless, like, they can't put the pawn where the bishop is, they can't use a pawn effectively here. The remaining possibility is, like, they place the knight in a way that jeopardizes everything we're doing, but I don't think so. I mean, they could use a pawn to support the bishop, and then we'd have to choose, well, do I take it this turn or next turn, or when do I want to take the bishop. And this is another fun idea. Like, um, a chess player would be like, oh, I want to take a piece. It's a piece. I like pieces. Um, a shogi player might calm down and say, hmm, do I take it this turn? Do I take it next turn? Do I take it? Do I want to take it? I don't know. Like, it's a pretty sad bishop. Yeah, if the bishop moves to escape somewhere safe, uh, we consider taking it. Uh, here, I'd, I'd probably still take it, but I'd hesitate. Um, like, I'd try to extract the most I could from this position. I can't... I'm dancing around the rest of the board looking for other weaknesses. Um, but yeah, we whenever we take this, we get it with tempo, so... Try to build up the rest of the attack first. Like, I don't know, this, this, what if we do something like that? Then this is hanging, and they don't have a gold to defend it. So, like, yeah, it helps to build up, and it, yeah, <laughs> Pac-Man syndrome. Yeah, that's a fun term. I might have to use that more often. But this is just... A moment in the game where, hey, we're winning, um, let's maximize our winning chances in this already great position. Um, it doesn't hurt to spend a moment to sit and breathe in and figure out, okay, yeah, I could take a thing, but why do I even want it? Like, what's my plan? What's their plan? Do they have a plan? I don't know. Yeah, if they defend it, then sure. It's it's probably fine to take it, but um, I'm just saying you don't have to. Like, I would like to use my bishop on this nice open diagonal. I'd like to use my rook on this open file. 
it, it's not open yet. I'm dreaming. But yeah, figure out one or more ideas. I'm being hypocritical again. and Yeah. Anyway, the silver drop is super committal because we no longer have a silver in hand. So none of our silver drop threats way up here ever work anymore because we don't have it. We lost the threats. We dropped the silver. We have a nice solid castle, but it's not the same. Anyway, um, yeah. Yeah, this is good. We attack the head of the bishop. This is scary bringing the rook over toward the king. This is how you lose your rook. Especially if this rook's already defended, and if somehow we lost it for a bishop, that's no big deal. Like, a bishop could be a useful attacking piece, probably. I'm not even looking. But, um, so we try to save the rook. Uh, if you're trying to save it, another option might be just drop it back here. And then you could play like, I don't know, what what do they call that? Spearing the Sparrow or something. Subway Rook, whatever. Fancy name. I don't care what they name it. I just care if it works or not. Or you could move the Rook up, because the Silver is not going to hit the Rook. The Knight's not going to hit the Rook. I'm not even sure how this Knight ended up here in the first place. But, um, this is scary. It's probably fine, but... An engine will tell you this is fine. A human will tell you this is scary. Um, yeah, this rook retreat's fine. Everything's fine until suddenly it's not. Um, and that's like the nature of how engines look at positions. Yeah, this is okay. Uh, we're defending our king. If we're bloodthirsty, and I would recommend it, you know... Um, we're threatening to smash their castle and to win the pawn here. Um, chances are they'll do something like that, and then we just take and take and... What are they going to do? What's their big idea? Put this... Like, this would block their knight. We just go back. What are they going to do? What could they possibly do that hurts us here? I don't know. So, um, yeah, this looks pretty threatening. And I don't know how, I guess they could do this and allow us to just come in and attack fiercely. Um, they might drop back, I guess. I don't know. I don't see any threat. Well, I'm sorry. If they drop back, this is walking straight into a fork. So I guess they don't do that. But um, I guess if they go over here, um, like this looks so advantageous. Um, I don't. All their pieces are blocking all their other pieces. It's kind of magical. And we get this pawn deep nested in the opposing camp. Oh, and then we have this capture too. I completely forgot we had that. So we like promote, yeah, this is just massively advantageous. It's possible their king might escape to the left, whatever. We can also open the diagonal whenever we want to. I guess their gold protects the 5-5 five five point. So I guess, like, if we push this, um, <clears throat> sorry, if and when we push this pawn, they could push pawn 5-5, five five. we'd have to hit the gold and then take here or something. Uh, but yeah, we control this side of the board. All their pieces are defensively posted here. Breaking this castle is not going to be easy, but promoting pawns everywhere else might be, I don't know. Anyway, we play this less aggressive, much calmer, totally fine move. Uh, we play this again, totally fine. This is fine, this is fine, this is fine. Opponent tries to build some... Ca <laughs> They're splitting their castle to try to deal with our stuff. And I think spectators as well as myself expected this. 
just clearing way for the bishop um, to enter while also promoting a pawn. Um, now, maybe this doesn't work the way we hoped. Maybe the opponent has to use their last remaining piece in defense, and maybe this does get complicated. Um, hmm. This does get complicated. Okay. Uh, is there any trick here? No. That kind of sucks. Alright, I mean, so... Bishop takes is not forced. You could drop a knight or something else to do this attack. Uh, you're just softening up the castle looks kind of fun. In the back of my mind, I'm thinking about Lance takes, Lance takes, and then... I don't know what. Oh, wait. Wait, Bishop 2-2 two, two actually was really cool in the game. It just led to this... Oh, yeah, and the Lance is not hanging here. But if we'd thrown in this pawn sacrifice first and then did bishop 2-2, two, two, and if we see the same thing... Um, now we have this square. Uh, does it make any difference? Gosh, I hope so. We could also prom uh, attack with our other bishop. It doesn't quite promote, does it? They drop the lance if we take here, and then we're forked. Um, where's the game-winning tactic? Games need game-winning tactics. Hmm, Bishop 2-2 two two isn't the silver bullet. I thought it would be fine. I thought it would be excellent. That the opponent barely survives this. Oh, wait a second, wait a second. Um, I guess both in the game and in that variation. Like, I'd obviously prefer to have the... You could still do this. Whatever. And actually, maybe you can't. Never mind, because the bishop's trapped. Uh, I was thinking silver drop, but we don't have a silver. You can't drop a knight up there. Dropping the gold would be so sad. Um, oh. Ha! <laughs> Wait, wait a second. Oh my goodness. This is... If this works, this is baloney. But, um... Yeah. This is so messy. Ay. Ay, this can't work. Can it? Why are we even looking at this? Like, I'm trying to justify the bishop 2-2 two, two as it's... Well, I said earlier this game um, that if you're attacking with your heaviest piece first, the attack's never going to work. And now I am here trying to justify this 2-2 two, two bishop drop. I can't learn from myself, can I? Um, what I should learn from myself here is don't... Like, okay, yes, this is cool, it's... It looks like a fork. If we win a lance, like, even if this was hanging, does it matter? Not really. I mean, we do get to take the edge, and that's kind of nice. But we should... I want a whole lot more than just this edge. Um, so I need to find some way to justify... <sighs> oh, man, this... Okay, where do I start looking for better moves? Like, I kept saying this is fine, this is fine, this is fine all the time, and rubber stamping every freaking move, but... Do I want to give constructive feedback or just try to make myself feel good? Um, so, yeah, it's, I mean, we gave the edge, and we didn't want to exchange further because then their rook gets out. That makes sense. But if I want to offer constructive feedback... Um, like, this is still possible trying to win this way, with everything getting exchanged. But then they defend this. Um, oh. This point. This is an interesting point. Um, how do we defend this? 
The opponent has pawns in hand and nothing else. So what if we defend our pawn? This gold is in a really precarious spot. They're probably going to attack down the flank, because this is the fast... They, they're going to try to exchange pieces and make something useful. Free gold. There be gold in them hills. Don't lead the attack with the gold. <laughs> Unless it works. Um, See, so yeah, I think this highlights... Uh, Oh, hi, there's a point that, um, yeah, something didn't quite feel right here. But this is not obvious. Not at all. I'd probably miss it, because this is such an atypical pattern of this is sandwiched in this way, and there's this crisscross of everything cutting off all these other squares. And none of these other pieces in any way, shape, or form support this attack. Like, that's the ridiculous thing here. Like, this gold has zero support from the rest of the army. The pawn, I guess in theory, is supporting it. But the pawn is what sentences the gold to die. Um, so... Uh, that's some kind of support. Um... I guess that's moral support. Uh, yes, yeah, so this is surprising. The opponent would have to do something pretty drastic to overturn whatever's going on here. I don't think they have time for it, so... Anyway, this is... I wouldn't expect anybody to ever find this, but... Um, yeah, I myself didn't find it either. Because, like, this pawn taking looks pretty serious, but it walks right into the trap that we've ever so cleverly set. But, on the flip side, like, this got extremely complicated, right? And I kept saying, well, okay, ideally this would be the coolest way to approach. We're attacking here, we're attacking there. Um... And this dodges all these other variations. Like, everything is dodged if we just play this. And what's the opponent going to do? So, yeah, if we're just, like, bloodthirsty and we're interested in both in winning material, but also in hitting the king. If we don't forget to aim for the king, <laughs> you really... <laughs> Shogi is not... Um, the game, like, once the conflict starts here, the conflict does not stop. It's rare for a game to enter a position where both players start attacks, and then those attacks just suddenly go away. That, I've not seen a whole lot of that. I guess it can happen, but, yeah, we're making the most of all our pieces. This like, starts an attack in a way that this is never stopping. The opponent has hard committed to a specific shape of attack here. Although that shape is a bit clumsy, isn't it? Because this is attacking this, this, or <laughs> this is defending this, this is defending that, but there's... And, like, while that's going on... This, I guess these both defend each other, so that's a good solid connection. But everything else is floating out here in open space. And thankfully that point is defended, and this point is defended. Or, like, they would be in serious trouble here. So, yeah. Since there is no weakness over here, or no easy to exploit weakness, except for like the knight itself with the bishop. And I keep pointing out that this doesn't matter. Maybe it does matter, if, but um, this is not like the softest weakness out there. They can reinforce this. But since this shape, since, um, let me just circle like what's defended here. Like everything over here is defended. Um, in many cases by... Well, yeah, there's not a lot of redundant defense, but it's super hard to wedge something in here. So the weakness is going to be on this side of the board instead. 
And so that's what prompts me to look for this kind of thing. So I'm like, well, I'm never going to win over here. So if I'm going to win the game, I have to find some kind of weakness here instead. Uh, this like static evaluation of... And static evaluation could be very, very mistaken, but... Yeah, it helps to know, like, what am I aiming at? And, like, if this looks hopeless to aim at, then there's got to be something elsewhere, or you're just lost. If there's no target, then it's hopeless. <laughs> you need to find a target. You need to hit something. Because if you don't, the opponent starts hitting, and you get to play defense. You know, this is fine. We've given up a bishop for Lance... Peace material, or peace value, is not that important. Really isn't. A lance could be dropped right over here. You could start taking things. One, two, three. Just munch all these. It's fine. Um, yeah, we lure up the rook. They don't take the bait. <sighs> oh, I'm sorry. We defend. This is defended by the bishop. If this weren't defended, it's still a good move. Because it creates all these holes behind the rook. Um, but since this is defended, they choose not to take it. And we get the edge. Um, but yeah, the opponent... Uh, there's an upside and a downside to every move. The upside for them is that they want a bishop. The downside is like uh, they've given up this side of the board. Um which arguably is more important than the bishop. <laughs> Isn't that wild? Like, in chess, pieces are worth a ton. And shogi, a bishop for a lance, eh, whatever. If you're attacking with the lance, it doesn't matter how much a bishop is worth in theory. Um, but, yeah. Anyway, sorry I don't mean to bully. The opponent attacks very nicely. I don't know if there's a missed mate here or not, but this works. Uh, they took the bishop. Ah, I've got to look for a missed mate here. I just feel compelled somehow. I mean, taking the bishop is more than winning, but... Um, is there a mate here? Just for my own self-indulgence. we got... A zillion pieces. If we go back, gold drop us mate. If we go up, um, rook drop. Yeah. Something like this. There's probably a better mate somewhere. They had an extra rook in hand. I didn't even see that. But anyway, opponent is playing very cautiously, but they get there. And, and about the same move count as it took me, so... Bummer. Um, wait, does that mean my what I was saying about the lance drop is just completely false? Or, I don't know. I'm not sure if it matters. But yeah, the focal point I'm trying to emphasize is... Um, uh, it's, it is important to think about critical positions. And I guess after the game if you can't identify the critical positions during the game identify them after the game and then figure out okay why didn't i identify this during the game like what should have been the big red flag that this is the moment where i've got to make some super important decision um one red flag is am i retreating um and shogi retreating can be frowned upon uh, if you're completely winning, it's one thing, but here, like, even though I hate the opponent's attack, would I call this completely winning? I guess so. But finding all the continuing moves here, like, finding Rook over to trap the gold is a bit hard. Um, I guess finding this might not be so hard. You might ask, why this? Like, what am I even thinking here? Uh... But I'm thinking, I want to give up the bishop. I want to checkmate this damn king. Um, um, so whatever that takes. But I'm too optimistic here. 
Like, the opponent's taking control of the center. We don't have... W oh. Wait. Wait. What if we throw this in first? Yeah, maybe this is the key. They have to defend this point or else we promote our bishop over here. Oh, but then we have a knight drop here, so they can't do that either. Uh, so goal... They have to take this, and then we... They come in, and we come in. Like, what's our clue that this is the critical timing? Well, the opponent is about to solidify something that prevents us from attacking. And our own king is a bit under attack. But finding the silver advance versus the silver retreat is a bit difficult. Um, Are there any other ideas any time around here? I mean, arguably this, um, arguably this is an idea. It's super dangerous. I can't recommend that. I'm not going to argue that. It's too dangerous. Uh, this looks fine. Uh, I guess they take a pawn or something. Why was gold tick so... Okay, the sacrifice. And then, like, why did this get so dangerous? I don't understand. We could just defend here, no? Like, what's the opponent going to do? I mean, yeah, we're a bit sad that we don't have any attack, and I don't like that. Um, it's just, this is difficult. We're caught between, like, wanting to defend against everything versus wanting to do a very fierce attack. Um, but if we've built our castle and we've done everything we can to build it, then it's time to attack. Uh, these half measures where we're switching strategies back and forth can be useful, uh, especially since the opponent's playing some pretty weird moves. But... Um, yeah, why does this all have to come down to tactics? Why can't there be, like, strategic... I mean, there's a strategic point. Just, like, get out of the way. Keep the king and the rook apart. Um, yeah, I don't know why this everything ends up being tactical. I mean, part of it's that we're not looking at the tactics either, but... Like, say they do do this... Okay, we take the bishop. They take the gold. Um, so we lose the gold. Oh no, how horrible. <laughs> I don't know. Um, they still don't have an attack here. Yeah. So I guess the point here is like the bishop can't stay on the diagonal, so it walks back, I guess. I guess one clue that this is complicated is that like so many pieces are in tension. And like, while you're live streaming, while you're hosting this for an audience and playing and maybe even doing some commentary, you're already under immense strain. And so the last thing you're wanting to do is have to calculate like this kind of thing. But like this kind of thing is what's going to help you win. <laughs> so... I don't know what the general advice is. Keep the king and the rook apart. I don't know. It's hard to generalize. I thought that some of these things would be easier to generalize than they actually are. So I stand corrected. Um, oh, this is a... In, wait, this I'm confusing this with a future game. So yeah. Perfect. And then after the game, like we we reviewed most of the game. I think this wins on the spot, um, so you probably want to play the winning move. You could argue that, oh, well, what if they don't take the pawn? What if they kick the bishop? Then you take the lance. It's fine. 
But you gotten this in one move earlier and forced them to waste time doing this. Like, this actually does matter. So, the opponent should not have played this. This game could have been over in the opening. Um, it's rare for me to comment that sort of thing, but, like, this looks so amazing, doesn't it? How is this not amazing? Okay, they defend their lance or something. Okay, fine. What do we do next? Um, how do I back up what I've been contending here? Man, I really like this position. Maybe I'm just crazy. Maybe I'm just crazy. Because I'm not seeing a way to checkmate. If we take this... We'd like to drop here, but we can't. Um, this is such <laughs> a fun position. Like, can we get away with this? Uh, almost certainly not. <sighs> yeah, no, this is no good. Um, the other thing I'm kind of curious about is this. I guess they can defend this. Um... Hmm, then we take, and then this, but they escape and, wait, wait a second, but then we can take this, and then check, and then, yeah. Alright, so is this all forced, or am I making shit up? Um... Uh, if we have this, it's a similar idea, no? But it might be different somehow. Um, the king might have more spaces to run to, or the gold might be able to defend some of this mess. Uh, I could sack the rook, I don't know. Like, this looks fun. Okay. I guess I have to ask Engine san am I just making shit up? Like... If they do defend this lance, um, which I didn't even consider. I have the engine switched off. Whatever. Exercise for the reader. Does defending the lance lose the game? Um, if so, then I'm making shit up. But if not, there's probably some merit to what I'm saying. Um, oh, okay, wait, wait. So, another thing they could throw in would be something similar to what the engine suggested in a different position. The idea here is that they get to defend the head of the castle and try to pull this together. And this is hanging still. So we take the knight, and we have lots of threats. We win one knight before we win all the rest of the stuff over here. So, I don't know. I think that this pawn attack on the third file, when we've built such a beautiful framework, like, this is the time. This, uh, I hope I'm not making stuff up. Anyway, next game. <laughs> Sorry I'm cutting it off there, but we did review that game a bit afterward. Um, and besides, I think like that was a pretty critical moment. That the opponent just kind of walked into. It helps to know how to pounce on critical moments. So, yeah, here, oh hi there was asking, like, okay, I feel like I'm missing a tactic. If you've seen um, Road to Shodan, was it episode three? Um, Carolina asked Wojtek, like, what is the weakness of Anaguma? Good question. Alright, that's just my impression on it. Like, what is the weakness of Anaguma? I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> if you figure it out, please let me know. <laughs> so yeah, I don't think it was... I don't think there was a missed tactic. We might be a bit harsh on ourselves here. If you want a missed tactic, this is a missed tactic. Um, does it matter? Usually no. 
But since this is Anaguma, and the gold general is pretty important to Anaguma Castle, maybe. But still here, probably no. This probably doesn't matter. Um, this bishop drop, this is actually... Yeah, I prefer this over winning the gold for silver. Having this excellent horse just cover the entire board while this other horse just sits here and cannot do anything. I mean, this horse is forcing all these pieces to play defense here, but... Like, this is such a beautiful contrast. This is an excellent maneuver. Um, and it forced the opponent to play this in defense, otherwise the silver drop, like... Or silver drop here or something... Just wreak havoc to the whole thing. So they're playing this silver all the way away from the king. They probably should have played it here instead. But then they're worried about this point or something. I don't know. So we castle. We castle. It's fine. We don't... Okay. I mean, if I'm really nitpicking... Um... We're looking for tactics. This is a tactic. Um, forces the rook to move, and then forces the rook to move again. Then we force the rook to move a third time, but it can't really move here. So we're winning material, but how much we're winning, I'm not... Well, yeah, we're actually winning a lot, so... Uh, I guess they... Our horse accidentally defends this fork point, too. <laughs> Oh, oh, that stings. Like, this horse promotion is the best move we've seen tonight. It's a really good move. <laughs> and the opponent was not at all prepared for this. That's really funny. So yeah, this tactic might matter, because like we're winning heavy material. That said, the opponent has Anaguma Castle. We're probably still losing the game somehow, but, you know... It's fine. Um, what should the opponent do? I don't know. Um, I mean, not walk into the fork for one thing. Or if they see this fork, uh, defend it some other way, I guess. And it's fine if they let you promote a silver, because silver is not going to do anything. I don't know. Opponent got maybe confused. Uh, so we build a castle. They build their castle. This is perfect. Um, yeah, there's no problems here. This is a typical Anaguma game. Minus this absolutely crazy horse move. That just begs for you to come in and attack them. Um, opponent did win Connect 4. And then they they play the silver into the heart of the castle here. But since they moved the hor the knight, it doesn't really matter. Like the key structure of the knight and silver is broken by the knight having moved. So like where the silver is might not matter. It might have been better back where it was already at. This knight advance is just... I've never seen it before, I have no idea. But, like, I'm so critical of it. And, yeah, we get to enter. And look at that. It's beautiful. The opponent continues breaking apart their castle, because what else are they going to do? Uh, we win material. We win material uh is it worth it maybe uh if we give them a bishop this is gonna get pretty iffy uh it's fine though if you can read all the tactics this is okay the opponent finally gets tired of their horse sitting in the corner um oh so they can promote their rook but they don't promote the rook. They drop this gold and never, never land. And this is the perfect... Uh, well, this is a good retort to that. 
asking, like, okay, are you going to really take this gold and move it further away from the king? Are you really going to waste time winning material like that? Um, I like this response. I was expecting this rook to promote immediately, and then this gets really painful. So... Uh, yeah, it's a tricky position. Oh, we can't even pawn drop in the head of this. Um, if we'd pawn drop here, they'd move this gold over. How do we make progress without pawns? It's so difficult. How did we end up here? Um, am I really going to suggest we should have taken a lance? No. No, the silver drop has to be right. This has to be correct. Yeah. And then the opponent drops the silver in no man's land. Maybe a mistake here was where the rook got retreated to. Normally you drop it all the way back, but in light of this sacrifice, this is probably the right move. And the opponent's got nothing. Yeah, this has to be right. This, uh, normally you would drop it all the way, well, okay, yeah, they could take a knight. We don't care. We have lots of tactics. We have lots of pawns to drop. Everything's going to turn out well for us. It's okay to give up this knight. Um, it said, um, what do we do? So, I mean, one idea is dropping here. Um, it doesn't promote immediately, but it does break up this um, this structure of generals. This is one idea. Another idea is this fork and then exchanging a bishop for two generals, and then betting the house on a fierce attack against the castle. That probably doesn't work. Uh, it's probably not enough pieces. Um, so like one idea, two ideas, another idea. Uh, it's so difficult. Um, like I did mention using the rook to defend this so that the opponent can't do, well, I mean, they could take our knight, but they can't do anything else. And then we could do all these attacks if they do take the knight. But, um, I feel like there should be a third idea here somewhere. Um, where's the third idea? Like, we don't need the lance because the opponent's heavily defended against a lance. They've heavily defended against a knight. Like, what we need is our rook up here somewhere, forcing all their pieces to move. And then once all their pieces have moved, um... We deliver mates somehow. I don't know. Um, I guess another idea. Um, like they take here gold drop. Um, so we win two generals for the cost of one general. Uh, they maybe attack this bishop. So it's not so easy to pull off the tactic, but then we've got this in-between move, and this general is hanging. Like, yeah, it's it's hard for me to answer what do we do, because all of their pieces are hanging, and or awkwardly placed, and or not defending their king. Um, Like, they're defending the head of the castle, but the king itself is super squishy back here. So... Between, like, the king being vulnerable and all the targets constantly moving around, it's hard to say what the specific target should be. But we'd like to get our rook up here and really wreak some havoc. And it feels like there's an abundance of tactics available to win material if we want it. Um, and that's, I guess, only possible because our rook is unopposed. I guess they should oppose the rook. And that makes our job harder. Um, so we have to defend against the exposed rook here. 
But then they're not going to just let us drop this freely. Well, here, it's without the Rook's support, the attack kind of dies. Mm. So, Rook 5-3 kind of walks. <sighs> okay. So, actually, you know what? What we should do is Bonsai. Um, say... Okay, forget this corner. This corner doesn't matter. Um, bonsai. Here we go. Both rooks are hanging. We don't care. Um, yeah. This is... This is fun. Um, I don't know what they do here. Uh, if they save their rook, they're losing two generals. And their rook is constantly a target for attack. Um, how do they save this? Do they just take our rook and we take their rook? Is that the idea? But now a rook drop is so, so severe. Uh, how do they even attempt to cope with this? This looks so bad for them. Um, but, like, what else can they do? Have I missed something? I've been trying to, like, strategically say, like, here's a strategic point or some other strategic thing and ignore all the tactics, but this tactic looks fatal, so... Uh... <laughs> Maybe this is their answer? That they're okay giving away two generals for a piece? Um, because they get a knight? Um... We don't have another way forward other than to take it, do we? Is taking good enough? No. Why is Shogi so complicated? Oh. Okay, now here that we've bullied the rook into the corner, now we go back. And our position is just extraordinary. Um, that's the key. So we've shut down this bishop takes gold sacrifice that allowed Anaguma to do pretty much anything during the game. Now, the question that follows is, what do we do now, right? Now that we've completely stopped the opponent's attack, uh, what do we do? And they might even do something like this, too. But, um, yeah, what's the weakness of Anaguma Castle? If you know, please let me know. Um, it's not easy, but I think it starts with stuff like this. Um, because if they take here, I think they're in a lot of trouble for taking that. I don't think they have an attack, and I think our attack is very amazing here. Uh, tactics would have to prove this out, but, um, yeah, I'm not seeing how the opponent does anything constructive here. Meanwhile, we have this fork, um, which promotes and gets a dragon, and then we could drop the captured piece and keep smashing the castle. And if that weren't bad enough, we also have this. So... Maybe in light of all those tactics, they have to do this. Uh, defending the weakness at the top of the castle and trying to defend against our rook drop. Um, but then, you know, we drop a rook anyway. Maybe they defend, I don't know. And then we go back to this. <laughs> um, and the opponent, can they drop a rook? Um, so they saved a... Okay, 
alternative line to explain why I'm looking at this. Yeah. I mean, Anaguma is so hard to break. It really is. So why am I looking at this defensive a try here instead of this, right? Well, I kept saying that this attack is so severe. I kept saying that again and again. And I believe that, but like... It's so squishy. Look at that king. Um, I just cannot imagine this king surviving this, but um, maybe it does survive. Uh, they play this or something? Like, what are they going to do? Yeah, they defend at the top, but the side is so extremely vulnerable. Like, this is crazy. So we take one silver, and the other silver is instantly hanging. And then after the silver drops, the thing defending the knight on its head is also dropping. Um, but, um, I don't know, maybe they promote this. And if we take the dragon, then they can defend the silver. So instead we take here... But then they get their bishop escaped while attacking with tempo. Or maybe if that's not the right idea, maybe they do this double attack. Uh... Shogi's complicated. <laughs> I mean, even here, we defend both of our pieces. And we still have, like, this drop threatened, or this drop, or, like... Uh, how does this king survive? How do they make any real threat while this is going on? I don't know. This horse shouldn't be here. This knight shouldn't be here. Arguably, I put the lance there. Maybe it should, maybe it shouldn't be there, but it feels like without this lance, the, all these points are crumbling. Or at least these two. So that's why I stuck this here, but maybe this is bad. I don't know. But yeah, these are some ideas. Um, so a rook against like a wide open back rank. Um, like, this has got to work for us. We have to believe this works somehow. <laughs> or we have to do more sume until we understand that it does work. But yeah, so... Instead of us seizing the initiative, uh, either there or here, or perhaps there are countless other ways to do it, I don't know, but, like, instead of taking the initiative, we fell behind, and Anaguma smashed, like it tends to do. Um, yeah, like, if you don't, yeah, what if it doesn't work, uh, then you s s practice more sume? Practicing more sume doesn't work, uh, you pick a different opening. Like, if that doesn't work, you just quit shogi, I guess. I don't know. Um, like, a wide open back rank, like, this has to work. If the opponent is provoking you that much, um, like, either they're doing so... <laughs> Um, accidentally or intentionally. And if they're doing so accidentally, then you teach them a lesson. If they're doing so intentionally, um, you find kinder opponents to play against. Um, I don't know. Or you learn your lesson and figure out how to checkmate the king. And next time they do it, it's like an accident because they know what you're doing is going to win. But yeah, I don't know. Uh, kind of wild position. Is this move easy to find? I think this is definitely findable, but evaluating it might be hard. Um, is this move easy to find? Not really. Um, like, with our rook already attacked, it's not the first course of action to think, what can I attack? Um, and maybe this even, like, defeats the thing, but 
I don't know. At some point I'm like, hey, that rook is a free target, and I can hit that as many times as I want. And every time I hit that, I get an extra tempo. So at some point I'm like, you know, if the rook wants to do its little dance, that's kind of cool. But we're going to win a tempo every time they do that. Well, actually, they don't push the rook up here. There's a tactical rejoinder right away. But at some point you're like, I don't even want my rook. I just want to keep hitting this thing and like checkmate them. I don't know. Tactics are hard. Shogi's hard. But the most rewarding parts are the most wildly tactical stuff that you don't want to look at it because you're afraid of it. But it's where all the beauty lies, too, so, you know, sometimes you just gotta have fun. <laughs> I find this this insanity sometimes fun, because you're like, okay, I don't know if this works, I don't care if this works, we're doing it. We're gonna learn something either way. <laughs> but uh, that's just my proclivity. Um, uh, yeah, but I'm just constantly looking for ways to get an interesting position. Um, this was excellent. Don't let me diminish this. This is a good move. It's just, uh, you also need to find good follow-up moves, and sometimes that can be kind of hard to do. Oh, during the game I had this reaction. I wondered about this. Um, this defends the bishop. Uh, I wondered because tactics are everywhere. There's a lot of tactics here. Um, eeny, meeny, I don't know. Pick one. Do we even care about the rook anymore? Maybe? <laughs> I don't know. Do we care about the rook? I have no idea. Do we care? Uh, like, obviously, if they take here, this is checkmate. But they're not doing that. Um, I don't know. This is fun to look at. During a game committing to this, it's hard to commit to. Unless your intention is more about having fun than about winning. Which, for me, can be the case. <laughs> like, hey, I want to play an interesting game. I don't... We're going to... But, um, yeah, I guess one other line that's kind of spooky is like, oh, no, we got this stuff lined up here. But we're threatening to promote. The opponent has to do something about that. So they're not going to play this. They have to do something about the promotion first. Um... Yeah, so this is actually why, like, you don't build a castle with all of your pieces hanging. Because tactics happen. Uh, they might take back here. Um, where's the next tactic here? Why is there no checkmate yet? Where's my checkmate? Uh, do we sack the horse this way? I don't know. Like, we're threatening to promote. This can't... Sacking the horse might be a bit much. So what else can we try? Um... <laughs> yeah, maybe this is the answer why we can't just, like, haul off and do the fun thing. Hmm... I thought there would be something here. Is there not? Oh, maybe there is. So they take our rook, we take their rook, they take our gold, we check. Uh, they defend this somehow. Uh, we're out of attacking pieces. And the lance is unfortunately not the right piece for the job. Damn. Alright, so this insane uh taking over here this is insane we don't take that um yeah promoted silver takes six seven is not the move there 
Uh, is there some other move? Dropping pawns doesn't change. Does change that in a way that I didn't predict. Um, okay. So yeah, the silver takes I thought was cool. It's not cool. Don't do that. Um, it's to me that would have been my impulsive play. I probably would have done that and probably got screwed for doing it. Um, hmm. Yeah, tic tac toe is a good game. So this is a mess. Why is there not an obvious rejoinder? Like silver drop four seven, I was such an advocate for. I'm like, yes, this is the way. Clearly, um, but the more I look at it, the more I realize that um, maybe just taking here. Maybe this is the answer. Doesn't feel like it at first, right? Because there's this and that and the other, but we're threatening a fork. Um, it's not so easy to deal with. So Lance Drop 5-7 doesn't stop this fork. So we got a fork between this and another fork. Um... And they can deal with both with this, which cuts off our rook and defends everything. <laughs> which is super mean. And then we don't want to be their friend anymore. No, um... So... Yeah, that's super mean. Wow, our rook doesn't... Yeah, right? When I sacrifice a piece, my sacrifice needs to work, damn it. Uh, so... <sighs> Taking the lance is so sad. The silver drop has to be right. So sad. Uh... Huh. Yeah, so what's the weakness of Anaguma Castle? If you know, let me know. Maybe we sacrifice a silver for two pieces, which isn't even a sacrifice, but our rook is still blocked and they can still trade this and promote. I think the point here is that even though all these tactics exist, we must have had a chance earlier somehow. Oh, like I liked this move when it was played. But I was also, at the time that was played, I was evaluating this. Um, which is another way in. Is one better than the other? We don't know. But, like, this might not even be the critical point. Uh, wait, what was this move? Like, I said this is cool. I approved this. But then it's not cool. Because it doesn't do anything. Like, if the idea is to drop the horse into the castle and just have this invincible castle. It's pretty cool, but... Um, yeah, this is such a hard... Yeah, to go around the edge of the board. You're not wrong. That's the idea. Um, yeah, any other approach is going to have a lot of problems. Unless this somehow just waltzes right in. Then maybe it does. That's kind of loose. Now, you, you can contend, hey, it's not that loose. Because look, uh, they're putting force behind this and defending it. Um, like, there's a defense... Oh, I'm sorry, not that piece. They put a lance there and it hurts. But... Um, Wait, where was that? Instead of this... Well, this is fine, this edge pawn. This doesn't do anything, because like we're not really threatening to win over here, but... I allowed it. <sighs> so... Kind of losing my mind trying to break this. 
Um, it feels like I'm not solving the right problem. Completing the castle, I was okay with. This, I completely support. Um, uh, what next? Yeah, so this actually doesn't weaken this point, much as I wish it did. Um, hmm. Oh, hang on. If we're willing to give up our knight. Well, let's not give it up just yet, but this is the key that's in our pocket. We're going to hold on to that and expect that the opponent's going to drop Lance 5-5 five, five any instant here once they see what we're up to. The opponent actually coerces us into defending our hanging piece. Not that anything was attacking it right away, but it's a lot safer now that it's defended. Um, so, yeah. Pawn 9-5 is playable. It doesn't do a heck of a lot. But it's it's perhaps the best use of that move, because the opponent can't do much here anyway, other than Lance 5-5. Five, five. Which we'd be really sad to see. So, yeah, actually, this is the timing for this madness, I think. I think this might be the answer. Um, and I don't know how the opponent answers this answer. This is hanging. This castle is a really funky shape. Um... Uh, if the opponent takes this, uh, we're threatening this point very quickly. And then might we might also have a, like a silver drop over here in addition to threatening this. So maybe that's what's going on. Yes, they could still lance drop here. And it's still sad. And I can't find a way to break through if they do that. The lance shouldn't be on this square in the first place because it's super weak there. But our rook shouldn't be in the middle of the board either. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. The opponents built a really solid castle. We did an excellent thing promoting this horse, but finding a way in looks super hard so i'm not sure what to do about it it kind of sucks usually you want to have some insight as to what could i do better next time um like this horse retreat is such a typical retreat it's like pointed at a lot of good squares but maybe in this position we needed to actually target this diagonal instead this might be an idea we can carry forward into another game somehow. I don't know how, but... <sighs> yeah, we want to keep the bishop and the rook as active as possible. And it's okay if we lose the knight. It's fine. What's important is that somehow we manage to, I guess, win the rook or checkmate this king... And we're not going to checkmate the king anytime soon, because they built Anaguma Castle, and there's just nothing. Is there something better than retreating the horse? Like, no, we had to retreat it. The opponent played this. We didn't have a way in. So I kept saying, like, tactics like this don't matter. But, um, yeah, no, this is the move. This is the one and only way for us to break this castle. Everything else we've looked at fails. So yeah, this forcing sequence was it. And if we miss the forcing sequence, the game's over. That's the conclusion. <laughs> and not necessarily true, but true enough. So, yeah, this just underscores 
how important it is in the moment to find the right move or the game is lost. So, yeah, that's exciting. Anaguma's hard. It's so difficult to checkmate. Let's try the next game. I'm not saying my advice is accurate or correct or whatever, but it's just something I can understand. Um, and I'm welcome, I guess, to have corrections to it um, so I can do better in the future. So, yeah, we felt like this is a trap, eh? <laughs> this sure feels like some kind of trap happened this opening. Mm. This got super exciting. But this is the moment... Uh, like, every moment here is critical. Um, the opponent shouldn't have done that. The opponent shouldn't have done that. Shouldn't have done that. And so, like, how do we... Uh, deal with this um one way is exchanging the rook for the bishop that's fine i don't even know this opening trap maybe years ago i did know it but like this looks fun i don't maybe this is the wrong square for that uh yeah, almost certainly that's the wrong square. What about this? <sighs> Why is there no mate? Why? Why is there no mate here? There's... Oh, jeez. This looked fun until now. And now I'm just... Okay. This supports the bishop, so the bishop doesn't go here. Okay, so we pick a different square. If we pick the other one, we have the same tactic. Uh, or rather, maybe it does go there. Maybe they defend this somehow? Oy. Yeah, maybe this is the best they can do. So then there's a rook exchange, I guess. Um, I play this exciting move. Um, is this the dumb way to do it? Should I do it the other way? Because, yeah, rook drop here gets the rook trapped. So... Uh, I don't know. I thought this was going to be super punishing, and it's not. So, like, my suggestion is kind of silly. Let's take a look at the game. I liked this. This looked great. Uh, that looked okay. I mean, it's what I'd play, but I wasn't happy about it. Um, but it's the best you can do here, I think. This rook drop was an <laughs> was exciting to say the least. And yeah, there was an unfortunate mouse slip. You could even just play this here. Um like you don't need a lance necessarily. But yeah, there was a horrible mouse slip and things went chaotic very quickly. Um but this supports a lance drop that wins a rook. So the opponent has to give away their pawn instantly. Unless they want to lose the rook. Or unless this somehow wins, but I don't think so. Does this move win? I don't think so. I just take it. And, um, yeah, the rook's still trapped. And they can keep trying to make threats here, but we just run away. And just keep running. Just take one of those. Unless, like, they're gonna sack the rook, I guess. Mm, I guess this does look mildly threatening. Um, yeah. 
I'm not so comfortable with this anymore. Uh, so... Instead of... Uh, what was it? King 6-2, which is me just screwing around saying this doesn't matter. Maybe this is kind of serious. Um... Hmm. Hmm, I don't know. Maybe this is where we need that. Yeah. So I'm just keeping this rook out of the game. Since we're already winning one rook, we don't need to win two rooks. Um, yeah, it'd be cool to have the horse in the center of the board, but then... The horse becomes a target, so... Well... The targetness of the horse doesn't really matter that much either. So yeah, I'm doing some dumb finesse, but Lance Drop is more than fine. Um, yeah, opponents just walked into something pretty wild here. And while I'm afraid of giving away pieces, because they can be used to like target our own camp... Um, Chances are we've got the better side of that anyway. <sighs> yeah, I don't like this, actually. Pawn drop 5-5 five five is the way to go. Nothing to worry about here. Um, nothing to fear, but fear itself. Anyway, this accidental happened. Accidental drop, and the opponent didn't read it correctly. And then we moved to gold because we were so excited about what was going on. Um, like, we could just take the pawn. This position's not that exciting. This position's just decided. Not really, but, like, how... I don't see a way for the opponent to make this exciting if we just take the pawn. But we ended up here, and now that they've dropped this silver, um... You know, this is not that exciting. We just walk away. The pawn's blocked by the silver. Um, but that didn't happen. Um, this check happened. Uh, that's fine. Oh, yeah, we lost a bishop. That's just a bishop. Oh, uh, yeah, during the game, um, he commented that he should have just opened the diagonal here. I actually disagree. He should checkmate them. Is there not a way to win this game by checkmate already? Like, how do we win this? We want the king. We don't care about these pieces. Um, I have no idea what the opponent's doing here, but one two, and then we just take everything, drop some knights and pawns and stuff. Like, I don't see what they do. Maybe they try to defend this. Um, uh, we hit that, I guess. I keep harping on this being a terrible kind of move, but like, here we have this super awkward position. I guess, yeah, we get our hor our silver stuck in no man's land here. But material is no object in this position, because we're mating. Uh, probably. I don't know for certain. But we get to drop all these cool pieces right next to the king. That can't be so bad. So, um, yeah, I don't care about this corner. Like, our king's safe, this rook is doing nothing. It's really not that exciting. But we found a way to have something for the fans. Uh, it's okay. I've been here. I'm sorry for criticizing so much. This is completely sensible, Silver Drop. Um, completely sensible. I've done this sort of thing before, but um, this is fine. If you practice your sume, you know, like, they got nothing. 
This is fine. And we'll just attack whenever we feel like attacking and go mate them with this Arbata of pieces. We're fine. It's okay. Um, now, you might argue that, like, okay, but if they get one more piece, then we're screwed. Well, yeah. But they don't, so... <sighs> now I have to put together the task of how do I checkmate this thing so people actually believe me. Uh man, why do I have this fun task? Like, during the game, this occurred to me, um, that this could be kind of cool. Uh, I don't know if it mates. It looks fun. I guess they defend. And then we swing over here. Um, that blocks the horse. We don't do that. We swing over here. Yeah, like I was saying, this one. Um, or maybe we just attack their rook directly. Rook's not the most useful piece to mate with. Uh, if they drop this back, yeah. This is slow. Um, faster would be something more like this. Uh, and then we end up in these complications. We get to exchange the rook, I guess. If they bring up the king. I mean, this is just like death either way. Uh, if they open the back rank, they're in deeper trouble. So it has to be this. But then we hit from the other side. Um, what do they block with? Okay. Um, hmm, where's the mate? Where's the mate? Why is there no mate? Why is all the rum gone? <laughs> Um, yes, I'm not paying attention to my own advice, am I? I keep repeating this point about, like, don't lead the attack with your heaviest piece. And then what do I do? I drop the rook. I didn't see that they could defend the knight. That's my excuse. But, um, yeah, we need to attack with something else here. It's not easy. I want it to be easy. Why is there no simple answer? Oh, there is. Okay, we take the knight. Oh no, but the rook escapes and they're going to checkmate us with the rook. Oh, no they're not. That's the answer. The answer is we don't need a checkmate. <laughs> but they're not going to give us the rook like this, so... um, Yeah. That's the answer. I mean, yeah, maybe if we drop the knight here, we checkmate faster, but uh, we don't want to give away pieces right now. So this is like the nice, calm, simple idea. Um, just take the knight. They got to run. Um, and yeah, pray that you can checkmate them as they're running. Uh, they, they can't block with the gold without dropping this knight, so we get this, we get that. Uh, the rook actually does escape here, but like I said, well, no, actually it doesn't, because that's mate. Um, so, uh, yeah, we clear way for this attack. They cut off our rook. We cut off their rook. So they don't do that. Um, so instead, they have to cut off the rook this way. Um, but, like, this attack is doing fine. And this pawn was only hanging for the one turn while the king was running. And even here, we just win the rook some other way. Well, we don't even want the rook. The rook's no good. Everything else is more important than this rook, but... We can win the rook. 
but I like <sighs> the materials not important um just like I don't know no that's a terrible space for the night um yes our king can escape as long as they don't get a gold uh they don't have a gold so we can do stuff like this too so we win a knight then the knight comes up here somehow and mates i don't know well they're not going to walk into this knight for hitting the rook so they're the rook's going to go back here instead but then it gets hit this way it escapes but <sighs> like there's got to be mate in every single one of these lines somehow you don't just get away with playing rook takes 5-5 five, five unless I've messed up. I don't know. Well, allowing this is reckless. There's no reason to allow this. Yeah, we could just drop here directly, and that's more like it. The opponent has an interesting castle and a less interesting attack, so this is fine. So it was the key to all this. Uh, I mean, we made a window because this attack is futile. We've got all the time in the world to build windows and stuff, unless this is somehow mating. Is this somehow mating? I doubt it. Um, oh, but then here we run into the same idea in the game, except now they no longer have a lance drop up here. They are one piece shy of having a strong attack. There's even a proverb, like, once you have four pieces in the attack, the attack does not stop. But three and four are not the same number. So I guess the general guidance is if the opponent has three attacking pieces, I don't care. If the opponent has four, I guess I do care. So... Anyway, yeah, crazy stuff happened because the opponent attacked with three pieces. And we walked right into it, which was sad. Um, uh, I'm sorry, not here. This is where we walked right into it, which is sad. But it can happen. Yeah, uh, moral of the story, uh, if there are four pieces in the attack... The attack does not stop. That's not to say that it wins, it just means that the attack does not stop. It might be that both players are attacking. Both players might have four pieces attacking and just one attacks better than the other. But three pieces cannot sustain an attack, generally. So good to know. Uh, last game. Sorry I got sucked into that, that was super interesting to me. Okay, this was cool, this is cool. <laughs> this put me on tilt. Maybe this is the what really pushed me over the line into saying I need to make a video. Um, Bishop drives fine. This is better. What's the threat? One, two, three. What's the opponent going to do about it? Uh, they're gonna die. Yeah, I don't know. Like, they're already down a pawn. And we're gonna take the center of the board. While they've also built this strange castle, so it's not clear where their king is going. This is just... They're asking for it. But no, we exchange bishops, so fine. Again, I would've just pushed the silver directly. And... Yeah, we still have silver 5-5 five five whenever we want to do it. We still have silver 5-5, five five, doesn't matter. This is cute. Nice. There's silver 5-5. Five five. Arguably, now that they've trapped the bishop, maybe you finesse it by trapping the bishop completely and forcing something. I don't know what. It's an idea. It probably doesn't work. This is probably the right way to do it. Uh, yeah, actually this turned out magnificently. And 
Again, a chess player just wants to resolve the tension. I don't know if we have any viewers here. <laughs> but if we have a viewer, viewer, how do we increase the tension in this position? How do we maximize our advantage so that we're going to win this game? I'll wait a minute. There's no fun in me giving away the answer. I'm going to enjoy some chocolate here, as one does. Mm -hmm. So, we spent all this time completely dominating the center. The opponent has stuck their king and rook together, like I would not recommend anyone do. But they have built up all these generals in the center of the board in a way that can resist any attack. No attack is going to break through this line of generals. There's no breakthrough in the center of the board. You know what? <laughs> They've probably fallen asleep. It's okay. Um, their previous answer is still correct. <laughs> How do you defeat Anaguma? You go around the edge of the board. How do you defeat this thing? Again, go around the head. Yeah. This is how we increase the tension in a position that's already very tense. He who disturbs his position the least disturbs his opponent the most. If this doesn't compel resignation, I don't know what does. Because, like, the opponent's attack has completely fallen to shambles. They're Fugire, they have no pawn in hand. They, it's very difficult for them to get a pawn. They haven't built a standard castle. They built, like, Invincible Castle. When you sandwich your rook between the two silver generals. And it's cute. But it has one downside. In that everything that's not next to this big block of generals, everything else is vulnerable. So, yeah, um, this just wins. So, maybe this, like, it's funny. Um, I remarked how I would have done this, and then, like, okay, that's fine. We exchange the bishops. I remarked, you know, I would have done this, and that's fine. We exchange the bishops and such. And building the castles completely good and well and reasonable and probably the best thing to do here. It's just funny. Like <sighs> now this is better than what I saw. I didn't actually expect this to happen. Maybe the opponent would just fell asleep. They probably should have tried this. Because the night jump looks super spooky. But then you have this bishop drop that's also kind of spooky. It's not enough. Well, I wonder. Does this... Yeah, okay. Uh, Gota is not surviving this. So they can't do this, actually. So... <laughs> this position's so bad for Gota, unfortunately. Um... They have to, like, run away or something. Or... I mean, what they did, they brought all their silvers, all their pieces into the middle of the board to defend this. This night jump was pretty cool looking. And it prompted this response. And this response just like, gives up the corner. But before we take the corner, we this is a very good finesse driving the bishop into no man's land and starting an attack on this flank and like this just is the nail in the coffin where we've dominated the left center and right sides of the board all the op opponent's pieces are scattered and confused like this is the nail in the coffin um we missed it so, yeah, we still have a strong attack down the center, but the opponent um, starts to get an attack, too. <sighs> so sad. <laughs>
I mean, it's, we're still doing fine, but... Arguably... Uh, do I want to go here? Do I even want to have this argument? No, I don't want to have that argument. The real argument is, like, this knight is not doing anything. Rook 5-6 is silly. Silver 4-8 is also pretty silly. Um, we all know the way to defeat a knight is silver on its head. The way you kill a vampire, the stake through the heart, you know, that sort of thing. This not only cuts the line for the bishop, but it wins the knight. They can defend the knight, but like we see what's happening on the center file. Um. Anyway, fun tactics abound here. This is cool. Um, this is optimistic. We've already got one rook in hand, but one rook is not enough. We need both rooks attacking. Um, cooler heads may prevail with this. The opponent's attack isn't going anywhere. A rook across the rank is a good defensive piece. And we don't... yeah. Anyway, how did this game go? I forgot. Yeah, so you had this check. That's pretty cool, I guess. Rook drop, I completely get it. I like it. Uh, is there a better move? Like, because this is post-game analysis, we have time to look for better moves. So again, like, this might be simpler. Might be way more complicated if everything gets exchanged, but in principle, like, this against the knight is the right shape. Um... But since we've got the king and the rook together, maybe principles don't apply anymore. Um, well, this wasn't what I wanted to comment on, even though this was excellent. This is excellent. Um, so we see the bishop peering down this way, knight hitting this, the pawn hitting that. You know, there is a response here. It's hard to find. It's one response. If you're playing defensively, trying to stop the attack, this is the defensive way to try it. If you are, like, bonsai in on this attack, this is the more aggressive answer. Um, so, yeah, that that looks pretty severely weak. Um, how are they going to defend this? Um, this, yeah, it's hard to figure out how to use the knights. It really is. But since we're in Zeto, since the opponent has absolutely no attack against our castle, like, they can promote this. We don't care. They could take a gold. They could take a rook. They could take another gold. We don't care. <laughs> it's wonderful to be in this kind of fun position. Um, so how do they defend this point? I don't know. Uh, how do I clear all these circles? Yeah, so how do they defend this? Um, not with the king. Uh, maybe they have to play this? Or maybe the king just runs away. If the king runs away, silver drop is mate. It's not mate because the bishop covers. All right, so we try this. Um, it walks right into this line, but sure. And then we do this. And they have a defense for at least one turn. I'm so bad at checkmating, if I've not said so earlier. Uh, and they go back. I don't know. There's no defense, basically. But... I'm not seeing the best attack. Yeah, so this is... Sometimes you have to drop the knight far away for it to be useful. It's really hard to figure out how to use the knights effectively. But yeah, this is what I most wanted to comment on about this game. It's not any of these opening shenanigans that I don't know anything about. Um, um, but just this silly observation that the knight here uh, is a really cool looking move.
Sorry. I know we hope for something theoretical, but I like this more gimmicky sort of thing. I guess the opponent can drop back. Um, hmm. What do we do about this? Check. Um, this looks rough. Yeah, maybe I'm full of it on this occasion. Sure looks that way. Um, so this cuts the line, allows us to capture the back rank again. Consequently, gold to 5-1 is no good. It has to be bishop back so that, that line can't be cut. Um, but then we just win the bishop. That's so painful. Um, I mean, I guess we're losing the knights and the opponent gets some counterplay, but I like this cool thematic stuff. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, this looks fun. Oh, fun point. Moving the knight to give check just makes it easier for the king to escape. So that's why I'm just like completely ignoring this hanging out here. My target's the king. I don't want the king running away. So that's why I'm just like taking everything out of the way here, completely ignoring what the opponent's doing. Because um, the goal is the king. The goal is not to save these pieces. Uh, it's easy to get have a mistaken idea that um, checking the king leads to checkmate. It really, really, really doesn't. So, um, I mean, even here, like, dumb pedantry, that's mate in one, but, because this is defended. Um, so checking the king around tends to let it escape. Uh, this rook drop is an exception to all that, because the king is so well ensnared at this point. Um, but, yeah, I liked this bishop drop. I really did. The opponent walks right into it, so, like, yeah, no, this bishop drop looks correct, but it's so hard to checkmate the king in the corner. Um, mm, mm, mm. Hmm. Mm, mm, mm. Is this the right move? The bishop is a horrible defensive piece, so maybe this is a cleaner mate um i don't know i'm not good enough at suma um yeah that's not good enough because it takes one move to place it and another to attack with it this has to be right yeah we get we got gain of time while attacking here knight drop two five Looked right in the heat of the moment. Still looks fine here. Um, I wonder. Is this the answer? Is this what we're seeking? Um, so now knight drop 2-5 looks fatal. Um, this might have been what we were looking for earlier. <laughs> yeah often checking can let the king escape so um it pays to look for alternatives oh right and then that other game from was it earlier this week or the weekend or something when i said hey there's another game worth studying that was another situation where the king kept getting checked and running away and checked and running away um, it's often better to just surround the king and then mate it. Um, hard to do, but if you, with enough practice, it's doable. Here, I guess the opponent can only escape their king forward. Um, moving the bishop, um, 
Is moving the bishop going to let the king escape? Maybe. No, actually the bishop hangs everywhere you move it. Like, you could potentially move it here in desperation. Uh, and we've got to mate this king somehow. Oh, where's the mate? Where's the mate? I mean, this might point out that the bishop drop that I really liked might not have been correct. Despite that I really liked it. Yeah. I think that's what's going on here, is that I'm confused. So... Like, I liked the rook drop, I liked the bishop drop. And now I'm calling myself an idiot. Um, yeah, why not this? The opponent has nothing in hand. So, this is mate in one. Um, what do they do? They have to run, one way or the other. Uh, they probably don't want to part with all this material, but... Surely... Whoops. Uh, gosh darn it. Yeah, um, I deleted the wrong history there. Knight 5-4. Yeah, no, surely this gets mated, because nothing's defending the king. But, where's the mate? Um, maybe this is the safer direction. Uh, it's a fork. This is hanging, this is hanging. Um... Yeah, this is lights out. There's no defending everything here. So, um, on account of that being lights out, they're going to go this way instead. And, I mean, there is still this fork. Um, but, it's not mate. So how do we continue attacking this king? That's kind of why I liked the rook drop forcing the king out, but the king getting out had its own set of problems. So this is a fork. The opponent has only one legal move. This attacks the bishop. If the bishop runs away, surely a knight drop does something here. Maybe not. Are we supposed to take the lance instead? Um, so if we take that... Yeah, we have strong attack. The opponent has no attack. Um, although this wasn't with check, so they do get time. They do have time to do something. Unlike in the game where we push them up, and then it took some time anyway. So this is... I'm still not playing this right. I keep suggesting don't lead the attack with your strongest pieces, but what else can do the attack here? I don't see another way in. Oh. We have pawns. Pawns are cool. Uh, yeah, what about this? That pawn, if they drop it, is not going to kill us. So, like, they take here. Now we check. They can't drop... Oh, they could drop the pawn. I was going to say the bishop cannot retreat, but now they have a pawn to drop. All right, let's change it up. Check first. Bishop back. Pawn drop. There we go. That's the magic I'm looking for. If gold retreats, we still do the pawn drop or whatever. We're still... Heavily advantageous. Um, yeah, that's fatal. Um, that'll do it. <laughs> we even get to use our bishop if we want to. Um, oh, they can't drop the pawn here? Because, oh god. Wow. Uh, yeah. I like this better than I liked the game. It had very similar moves. Can this transpose into what we did in the game? Rook drop. King up. 
So bishop drop, king up. No, this doesn't transpose because the king escaped. So yeah, we have to trap the king. Um, and we still have all the same threats. Uh, the king has to... If they don't try to run, like we have mate in one. Right. Uh, so they have to try to run. Yeah, we still get to use all the same pieces on all the same squares. But we have one more attacking piece. And it makes an enormous difference here. Um, like, do they have this... Are they safe from mate here? I don't want it to be safe. <laughs> I want this to be checkmate. Um, I wanted this to be effective. And if they take that, um, then we drop here. Like, this is just barely working or not working. I don't know. This king is not going anywhere. That's the point. If it, I could be lying. Um, check. No, god damn it. Why does this king keep escaping? Why am I so bad at this? You're supposed to practice actual checkmate puzzles. Practicing the stuff from your games generally is not going to result in advice. End games are the hardest thing to learn this way. I like this bishop drop, but maybe it's just bunk. Um, maybe you have to take the gold. I don't... It doesn't make sense. Like Taking the gold seems to build initiative, but then the king starts escaping. Uh, the opponent has a pawn and a knight. The pawn cannot be dropped on the center file while they still have a pawn here. The knight could be dropped, but it's not going to defend anything. So, yeah, we just keep attacking. So this traps the king. Um, yeah, so if they take our silver, or take our knight this way, uh, it's not going to save them. So they don't take that, because that's ridiculous. Who would take that? But then what are they going to do about this hanging? They go back. Um, why is there no mate? Feels like there should be a mate. There's no mate. <laughs> so sad. Hmm, like night drop. Gold takes, silver, no, no. Doesn't lead anywhere. Knight drop lets the king escape. Um, silver drop blocks the rook. Silver drop here just wins material. We have all these other exciting variations, and then there's this, oh, we're just going to take all the pieces thing. And if they promote check if the, the king cannot run there this is not mate why am i so bad at checkmating uh there's no mate why is there no mate why is there never a mate um this is ridiculous okay yeah there's the mate Check, check, mate. Frickin' heck. That was hard. All right. We found it. We found it, finally. So, what's this all conclude? That's not so easy to spot during the game, but the intuition should be, don't let the king run away. So it can't run left and it can't run right here. We just cut off its... The primary escape for the king was out this window. So we trap the king out this window. There's not a second window that I see. Um, and the opponent's attack is, like, super slow here. 
compared to our mate in one threat. So, um, yeah, this is just the way to close out the game. Um, but I don't know, general conclusions from this. I wonder, because, like, that was some super sharp tactical stuff. Oh, yeah, this notion of retreating, I'm sorry, repeatedly exchanging bishops worked out in the favor, but, like, with some help from the opponent. This knight advance was really cool. Uh, silver advance was really cool. Um, this would have made the game much less interesting. But... You know, if the game's less interesting, you don't get as many viewers either. So, double-edged sword there. Um, anyway, it's been fun. Uh, I don't. I had set out trying to give general advice here. Um, my general advice kind of sucked because I couldn't back it up with variations or with other parallel examples or things. There is a list of shogi proverbs I've got. Maybe I should offer that to you in some way. Because they teach so much more effectively than I can. But it's just fun exploration anyway. So thanks for watching. Have a good day.